a shrink, a brother, a father, and just happens to do real estate on the side too. He's a man of many talents with many talented fighters in his stable. We recently got a chance to talk to Cesar Garcia. And the co-promoter for September 17th, Global Sports Streaming Best in Bucks. What? What did I say, 17th? Yeah. Just kidding. Okay, three, two. <laughs> Courtney, right? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> three, two. And the co-promoter for the September 19th Best in Boxing pay-per-view, we have Cesar Garcia from Grito de Guerra. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Courtney. Thanks for having me. I'm um, looking forward. I'm I'm really looking forward to to working with uh with uh you know Best in Boxing and with Saul. So mm -hmm. hopefully it all turns out good. Yeah, Saul said thanks. He gave you a shout out too during his interview. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Now Great let's guy. talk about the promotional company you have. I mentioned Grito de Guerrera. It means war cry. So what kind yes. of uh you know that that makes me just conjures up these image, images of warriors. So what kind of um vibe do you have at your camps? Well, um, one thing that, that I always tried uh, to, to focus on is having like uh, really good fights. I'm not really too focused on A or B side fighters. We want, mm -hmm. we want fights. Uh, and that's, I think I've accomplished that. I've had three promotions in, uh, in Guadalajara and uh, they've all been, I mean, I, of course I'm biased. I'm going to be biased in my, <laughs> in my answers here, but they were great fights, all of them. And uh and that's what we we want kids to know that if they come they come fight for us they're gonna fight but they're also gonna they're also gonna be um, taken to the next level just because of the types of fights you're gonna get you know yeah and like I mentioned you're the co-promoter for our pay-per-view event coming up and you put together some of these fights and I know a lot of people are looking forward to Junior Cervantes what can we expect with that yeah, man Junior is a a pretty explosive. Uh, kid, um, he's he's a baby. He's a, only 18 years old, so he's got growing a lot of growing to do. But uh, I mean, he's already he, he he puts his sparring partners down quite often, um, and he's done that. And the times he's fought in, on, on Saul's cards, and uh, you know, we want to continue to feature him. But yeah, the kid is he's a little bit of a he's a beast, you know, for being so young. Do you get nervous putting such a young kid in there? I mean, mentally, there's a lot of growing up that's done. You know, I guess in the next few years for him. I, I do. I do get nervous. I mean, uh, when I when I fought, I didn't get as nervous as, as I do now with my guys fight. So <laughs> so I do. I get nervous. You know, I, I, I no matter how much you you prepare them and you believe that they're going to win that that I don't know. I don't want to call it doubt, but, you know, anything can happen in boxing. And, and that's always in your mind. So it makes you definitely makes you nervous. That's, that's hilarious me. because that's exactly what Saul said. He said he's so nervous as a promoter, more nervous than he ever was as a fighter. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. When you're fighting, I mean, it's a good time. You know, you, you're under control. You know what you can do, what you can't do. Uh, but when you're when you're promoting or even managing these kids, you you throw them up there, and in a sense, you cross your fingers and, and just kind of pray to the sky. I hope everything works out the way you plan it. You know. That's right. And Junior's not your only explosive fighter. You have some a great stable of fighters under your banner. Brandon Valdez, we've got Aline Khan, you know, both recently fought on ESPN. Um, Brandon Valdez, what happened there? Do you think it was because he cut too much weight? Or I know that we, like, he had a shot at the, uh, the, the bantamweight, super bantamweight title, um, but lost on Telemundo. What do you think? What yeah. was your takeaway? Yeah, I mean, my, my first instinct when they originally offered me the fight, um, I didn't really like the fact that it was 122 pounds. We had we had already spoken with, with Brandon and with uh, Coach Manny, and we had decided to leave 122 behind and move up to 126 for the simple fact that Brandon is is, is, is growing still. I mean, he's, he just turned – I mean, he's about to turn 22, but he's probably not as going to grow as much. But when he got to us at 18, he was really thin. And we fought at 122, no problem. But as he's become more of a man, he got bigger. It's not that easy to make 122 anymore. So my first instinct was like, well, I don't really want to do that. But it was for a title. The money was okay, but really he wanted that belt. We felt that he could beat the, the opponent. I mean, we felt comfortable as far as ability-wise that he could do it. Um, I don't want to say I doubted that he could make one. 122. I knew he could. I just think he would be losing and doing so, and uh, and he did. He lost a lot of his, a lot of his strength, a lot of his quickness. 
he wasn't in, in prime condition for that fight because of that. And uh, I mean, I guess you could say we paid the price, although we feel happy with his performance. We feel that he he gained a lot of experience and uh, he actually I believe he actually got stronger as a fighter for going through what he did. And uh, and now absolutely we leave one mix at perhaps even 130 pounds. Yeah, a lot to learn inside and outside of the ring there on, on that one. And I think that it's always good to have some kind of learning experience and that experience in general. Now, when you get to work with these fighters inside the ring and then also take it out in the outside of the ring, you have a, a crop of young fighters that you are really influencing uh, to become men. What is that like for you to be on both sides? Well, you know, honestly, I always tell people as a, as a manager, because I'm also a manager here in the States, I, I'm a promoter in Mexico, but as a manager, I'm, manager is probably the least of my titles. You know, I'm a, I'm a big brother, I'm a dad, I'm a mentor, I'm a shrink, um, all these things combined into one. And, uh, and yeah, I always said, you know, uh, no matter how good these fighters are, um, the chances of becoming a world champion are pretty slim. A lot of things have to go your way to do so. So... If, if they don't become champions and I help them become good quality, you know, men and, and family people as, as they get older, then I think my, my job or whatever they hired me to do has been a success just off that alone. You know, of course, they want to be champions. I want them to be champions. They want to make money. I want them to make money. Um, so that's the number one goal. But I, I mean, it, it, that's, it's, a, it's a reach to, to, to accomplish that all the time, you know, so. At the very least, I know I can help them become men, and that's pretty satisfying in itself, you know? Yeah, that is really cool. We appreciate that for sure. And we certainly appreciate you uh, and Grito de Guerrera, of course, Boris Teca, co-promoting September 19th. You guys have been with us and in, in through this pivot, so to speak, that coronavirus has set up for us. You know, we certainly appreciate you going through this new reality of boxing and, and what sports in general is becoming. Um, how was the change like for you realizing, oh man, we're losing the gate, we're losing the audience, we're losing the money of people coming in. And then maybe when you realize, oh, this streaming thing, this pay-per-view thing, like this could actually work. So take me through that kind of roller coaster of emotions. Well, it's one of them things. It's, it's either you adapt or, or you die, you know? So, so we've had to adapt. Um, thought it was a great idea from Saul and Armando to, 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 you know, to do the pay-per-views. It, it may, it might end up sticking even after this, uh, this whole pandemic thing go, blows over, you know? So, um, I think it, it was just a natural to, to, for, for what we're doing now to evolve into that. I mean, that's the new world, people paying for apps, people paying for stuff online all the time. So I think, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to add to what, what we've already been doing as promoters. Um, and right now it's going to be what, You know, but uh, it's something you know we 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 can't we 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 lost lost you. There we go. Okay, here we go. Can you just repeat that last part about what you're doing as promoters? We heard most of it. You're saying as promoters, and then we lost you. Yeah, I mean, as promoters, we have to adapt. We have to adapt and move on. We, we, uh, unless we don't want to be in this no more because we can't have a crowd, then then we leave the the whole business in general. But I know Saul know, even Armando knows now that that once you're in boxing, there's really like you're there's no way out. You're in, and so we're in. We just gotta, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So so we gotta figure out how to make it happen that, in a way that'll work for ours, for us, and for the fighters and. You know, we, we put our minds together and figure, figure it out and, and, and we move on, you know, we make and it happen. And I think the COVID-19 restrictions that have been put on the sports industry in general and particularly on boxing was something at first that was forced upon us. And now we're like, actually, this might work out pretty good because I've talked to some fighters who've told me their fan base, they immediately recognize an expansion. Now people from the United Kingdom are messaging them from other countries. So it's not just the people in your region that would buy a ticket to come see you. There's people from all over the globe now that are becoming fans, particularly in these developmental stages. So how do you think that might affect, you know, the, the, the push forward for your fighters? 
Well, one thing that I hope happens is that we end up getting fighters from other places that want to come fight with us. Uh, we want to welcome them. I mean, it's, it's, you know, if they want to come from anywhere, from the UK, from Australia, from wherever, we'll welcome them. We'll, we'll do whatever it takes for them to fight for, you know, with us, knowing that their family back home can watch them. So hopefully that's one of the things that, that ends up happening with this. Um, you know, I, I'm not counting on it, but uh, I think it's a possibility, a, a real possibility that it can happen. Cesar, I think you should just do an official challenge. You know, be like, I challenge y'all, come on, <laughs> bring it on. Well, we, well, we're working on something. We're working on a project that uh, that is going to be something like that. Uh, hopefully it, it works out the way we think it will, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is only the beginning, you know. We're, we're, as we move forward, we make adjustments and we better it so that, it, it, so that it ends up being a, a positive for everybody. So, you know, we're this first shows. Uh, we we're looking forward to it, but I think from this point forward, it's only going to get better. Yeah, and you mentioned that you're a manager, you're a promoter, you're a father, brother, shrink. You also own a boxing gym, Black House Boxing in LA. I gotta say, that's a good way to to scheme and check out new talent. I think is that why you uh, own a boxing gym. I mean, it, it is. It started really. It started because I wanted my guys a place to train, and I mean, not having to pay for a monthly every month. You know, uh, little did I know what I was getting into. But I mean, I love it. You know, I'm, I I I uh, I work from the gym. My my work is real estate. I work from the gym. I'm at the gym all morning. My guys are training, and then yeah, I mean, a, a, a plus for me is that I get to see kids come in and out, and uh, you know, I don't want to say. I get to pick and choose, you know what I mean? But I do get to pick and, 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 and see who I may want to work with, assuming they want to work with me. And then I also work with Coach Manny Robles at my gym. So just having him as, a, as my head coach at my gym mm -hmm. is, is, is a great way for, for doors to open with fighters all over the world. I mean, we got kids in, from the Ukraine. We got kids from Mexico. We got kids that come from... The, you know, other parts of the United States, Japanese kids, and they all come to my gym. And so, uh, I mean, I get to see them all. And, and luckily for me, sometimes I get to pick the ones I want to work with. Yeah. That's fantastic. You're certainly a man of many talents there. Um, talk to me Thank a little bit about the card that's coming up on September 19th. What have you put together for us? Well, uh, Saul has been the main matchmaker. I got to give him all the credit um, for that. Uh, I just know that as far as my guys, I had a kid fighting 154 pounder who's still up in the air. Elvis Bravo, we may move him somewhere else, but absolutely for me, Junior is a kid that I want to continue to develop. I've, I've already had interest from people in the States about him. Um, so so I want to continue to to develop him, putting him up against, you know, those, those tough Mexican kids out there. I mean, we just faced one in, 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 um, out there in Orlando this past Friday with Brandon. And uh, we were prepared for him, but maybe not as much as we thought. So now Junior, he gets to learn from, from uh, you know, what we just went through. And we're going to give him a tough kid as well. And uh, hopefully he learns because it only gets tougher, man. And then these kids in Mexico, they like to fight. They like they're to tough fight. and they're very aggressive style, a typical Mexican style. But it is really good to see those different styles and different kinds of fighters, even if it does mean a loss early in your career so that you're ready for it when you see it again. Yeah, absolutely. I think Brandon, uh, having faced this kid, wasn't the ideal person we wanted to face considering. But I mean, when you put a belt on the line, it's hard to turn it down. You know? <laughs> That's so right. We, we did it. Like I said, it was a tough, tough fight for Brandon and, uh, he, but he went, he's all the better for it, to be honest with you. He, he, he went through a lot to, to finish the fight, and uh, I think he got stronger because of it. All right. Thank you so much. Cesar Garcia of Grito de Guerrera, co-promoting our pay-per-view event coming up on September 19th. Sir, thank you so much for your time. And wherever you're going there, driving in your car, I hope you get there safely. <laughs> I'm safe. I pulled over. I pulled over, so I'm you not did. driving. You're in a good in boy like that. All right. <laughs> good citizen on the Absolutely. road. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Courtney. Looking forward to seeing you. 
Tune in September 19th at 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern to watch the prelim fights on Best in Boxing's Before the Bell. I'm hosting that pre-show live from Las Vegas, and the fighters, well, they'll be going live from a gorgeous beach in Rosarito, Mexico. You can watch all the action right on your couch at bestinboxing.com for $5.99. See you then. Wow.